you may say, be yourself, but there um, are some privileges to being myself, but there's also some consequences. And I thank God for the men in my fraternity, uh, my church. They're not yes men. No, we don't have milestones, we have inch stones. We just got the anti-lynching bill passed. The other day I was raised by a single father with an older brother and a younger brother in this city. Um, so it wasn't necessarily a talk, it was the conversation all of the time. I know that I'm not doing anything wrong, but then you still are going to also tense up because I am black. Recently, News Center 7's Letitia Perry sat down with these five black men to talk about life. Yes, and this follow up, we hear from those five black men talk about mental health, navigating single fatherhood, police interaction, and their take on the drama between two famous black men at this year's Academy Awards. Now here's Letitia's conversation with five black men. You surely heard about the now famous slap. It sent shockwaves through Hollywood and across the country. That same lack of control is what's getting so many young black men killed in this country. So that's how serious it is. Because in all honesty, let's say Will Smith was Matthew McConaughey, there would have been an uproar. So if nothing else, I believe that this event exposed that these are humans and we have got to start addressing them as humans and rethinking how they navigate these Hollywood spaces. My wife and I were talking about this and I said if, if it would have been me, I would have maybe you know, looked at Chris Rock and said, you know, all right, that's, that's, that's good enough right there. Stop right there. Taking into account in 94 years of awards, only five black leading actors, only one black actress, and only one award for outstanding movie costuming. We're not doing our research on that because we're so caught up in, well, Will slapped Chris and I'm, I'm for Chris or so I'm for Will. You know, and it's like, there's other stuff here It's too. a distraction. Yes, you know, yes. Really Talk about being a distraction, right? I mean, I'll never be able to speak eloquently or give a think piece about who was right or wrong, how it reflects on black folks, but it's a distraction. And what was the other distraction before this happened? It was Kanye and what he's been going through. What you're seeing on display in Hollywood is the exploitation of mental health, good, bad, or otherwise. And speaking of mental health, I asked the panel who met at the Dayton Arcade inside the tank inspired by Centerpoint Energy, do non-famous black men seek mental health counseling? Now therapy is on a rise and I want to honor that. Uh, black men, if you are out there and you need somebody to talk to, yes. do it. A lot of people will say, I'm not going to have nobody telling me what to do or I don't want to share my personal business with yeah. them. But I can honestly say, I thank God for my paid friend. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes. There you go. I think the acceptance for our brothers, in particular black men, to go get formal therapy services on the rise. The awareness is there. The pandemic made it much more accessible. And I think about just even within my social group, you know, it's not just the formal therapy services, but if the church and the barbershop are no longer in, I notice that my internal group has changed. We say I love you a lot more. The consensus here is therapy is necessary. But when I see my family dying, my lodge brothers are dying, and I can't even go to the funerals. Um, I haven't been at work, but we got to talk to one another. And it's good to get back in the barbershop because I need this brother. I need this brother. I need these brothers. Yeah. Historically, I feel like reflection, um, the ability to assess your behaviors and decide to move in a different direction is kind of rooted in the black church. Like we got on this regimen where we show up uh, to this building twice a week, three times a week, uh, Tommy probably seven times a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I believe black men left that space and haven't quite as a group found where do we now go to reflect. But I feel like as we grew and evolved, I feel like the church did not. The pastor is the pastor. The pastor is good counsel, but the pastor is not a therapist to me. We also talked about the relationship between black men and the police. Chef Anthony believes 99% of police officers are competent and trustworthy. But I know this, I know about their interactions. I'm not a small guy, I got a beard, I got brown skin. So I already know how they're gonna feel initially, but I disarm them immediately. Let them do what they gotta do, take the ticket, and like you said, we can go to court and we can fight it, but I need you to come home at the end of the night because so many of our young brothers aren't coming home. So the same attention 
energy funds that are put into that department to create safety is going to have to be placed in communities to give them an infrastructure to be able to not need as much safety. That, to Fred, is the real definition of defunding the police. From Rodney King to George Floyd, have we made any progress? No, 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 and then that's okay. I think because acknowledgement, they typically say it's the first step in any type of progression. The men tell me the election of a black president may have been a forward step. So Barack Obama can't be called upon as a forward step if we have Trayvon Martin in 2013, Michael Brown in 2014. We wrap up our conversation talking about black men living in a non-black world. They say it's challenging, often rewarding, being a son, a a friend, a co-worker, a husband, a father. It's not as dramatic as is often portrayed. In fact, one man calls it boring, but worth it. Boring is 4 a.m. and my son giving me a hug because you know he woke up early and I'm up at the same time. Boring is me making breakfast for these two kids, get them off to school. Boring is that drive, it's the routine of fatherhood, but we know how fundamentally and foundationally important that is. That's boring life, but I love it. I just want to be treated equal. You know, the bottom line is we're all God's children. That I am walking this world understanding how I show up as a black man, but also how I show up in a black man in a white world. And so there are always a dissonance. There's always two things happening for me. But the conversation continues on our free streaming app, WHIO TV Now. From the tank, inspired by Centerpoint Energy, inside the Dayton Arcade, Letitia Perry, New Center 7.